everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to find the inverse of a logarithmic function. So I do have a video on how to find the inverse of a function. You can click right up here, but I did not cover logarithmic functions and I did not cover exponential functions. So that's what this video and the next video will be, logs and exponential functions. But the process is actually the same. Do you remember how we found the inverse of a function? We switched the position of x and y, then we solved for y. And that when we solved for y, that was our inverse function. It's actually the exact same process when we have logarithms. The only difference is we have to really utilize this, this rule where we can rewrite a logarithm as an exponential, right? And if you've solved logarithmic equations, you've probably already done this. So really we just, once we switch the position of x and y, solving for y is the exact same as solving a logarithmic equation, right? So if you've gotten practice with that, this will probably be easy for you. But the first step I always do is replace this f of x with y, right? Because that makes it a little easier when we switch the position of x and y. So replace f of x with y, we get y equals log base six of x squared. By the way, what can we guess that this, the inverse of this function is gonna be? It's definitely gonna be some kind of exponential function, right? Just like the inverse of, of an exponential function is gonna be some kind of logarithmic function, they are inverses of each other. We just wanna know that specific exponential function, right? So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the position of x and y. So my next step, I have x equals log base six of y squared. All right, now that I've switched the position of x and y, I am gonna solve for y. This is a log base six, I didn't write this very well. Log base six, y squared. So now I can use my little rule and the way I remember it is six to the x equals y squared. So this becomes, I can rewrite it in exponential form, basically six to the x equals y squared. And now I'm trying to solve for y, so I just have one more step, and that is to basically square root both sides, but I'm gonna think of it as raising both sides to the one half power, right? So I raise this to the one half power, and that basically cancels the squared I have there. And I can raise this to the one half power as well. And since I have a power to a power, I multiply, right? So my final inverse function is going to be what? Y equals six to the X over two, right? Six to the X over two. And I'm gonna go and replace this Y with an inverse notation, which is just this little F. It looks like to the negative one power but it's not negative one, this means the inverse. So a six to the x over two power. And since these are inverses, well, I could plug this function into this function and I'll just get x, right? And the same works vice versa. So if you really wanna confirm their inverses, you could try that, you will get x. Let's go ahead and try this example. Same thing, the first thing I'm gonna do is replace f of x with y. Sometimes you'll be just given y, then you can just go straight into switching the position of x and y, but if it's f of x, you always want to replace it with y. It just makes it simpler dealing with x and y. So now I can switch the position of x and y. x equals ln y minus 3. And since we're dealing with ln, what is our base? ln is just a special logarithm base, right? It's just a special, it's log base e, really is what it is. So we have an invisible e down here. So when I draw my arrow, it's going to be e to the x equals y minus three, okay? So this becomes e to the x equals y minus three. And now it's pretty simple to solve for y. I can just add three to both sides, plus three, plus three, draw an arrow. This becomes what? y equals e to the x plus three. e to the x plus three. And I'm gonna go and replace my y with my inverse notation and this is the inverse of my original function. So again, I can plug this function into x here, right? And I will get out x when I evaluate that. So let's go and do one more example. Okay, I encourage you to pause the video and try this on your own. Press play if you wanna check your answer. So I assume you have an answer and you're just checking at this point. Y equals, I'm just replacing f of x with y, right? Now my next step, switch the position of x and y x equals 3 log base 2, uh, 2y. Now what? Well, I want to rewrite it 
as an exponential, but first I gotta take care of this three. This three out here being multiplied is messing me up. So I can do two things. I can write the three in the exponent using properties of logarithms, right? I can just bring this up here and that's equivalent. Or I can divide both sides by three. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and divide both sides by three. Uh, but either way, you'll get the same, you'll get the same inverse equation. Either way. So these threes will cancel. Now I have x over three. So let me draw in a little arrow. What do I have now? X over three equals log base two of two y. So now I can do my little trick and I can rewrite this in exponential form, right? I have two to the x over three equals two y. Let me write that down here. Two to the x over three equals two y. Now I can just simply divide both sides by two, but I'm actually gonna multiply both sides by one half. Same thing, right? And the reason I'm doing that is because, I don't know, it's just personal preference. When I have something like this, instead of writing this over two, I'd rather see a one half out here being multiplied because, I don't know, that's like the general form, what it looks like, you know what I mean? It's like C times A to the X, so that's how I'm gonna keep it. I'll be, I'll be nice here. Okay, so one half times two raised to the X over three power, okay? And now I can just replace this Y with my inverse notation saying that this is the inverse, okay? There we go, we found the inverse of this logarithmic function. So you can do this with just about any function, the same process. And if there's stuff being multiplied or added and subtracted out here, you need to get rid of all that stuff, bring everything to the other side, just basically isolate your log function and then use your you know little trick to convert it to an exponential form and solve for the inverse. So hope this video helped. Hit like, hit subscribe if it did. Check out my channel for more videos and keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you next time.